RMI stands for Remote Method Invocation. In this quick demo, I want to show you how to create an RMI server object and then access the same thing using a client program. So I've already opened my Eclipse and I have a RMI sandbox workspace on my desktop. I'm going to create a new Java project by right clicking on the package explorer, new Java project. And I'm going to call this as RMI dash server. I have installed JDK 14. However, this Eclipse supports till Java version 13. So I'm going to leave that as the default. I click finish to come out of the same. Since Java 9, we have something called modules or Java platform module system. I don't want to create module. I simply click on this don't create. I'm going to create an interface using which a client can invoke a remote method. Let's right click and say new interface. And I'm going to give the package name as co.vinoth.service and the interface name itself as hello service. I click finish. Since this is going to be a remote interface, we have to make sure that this interface is a subtype of remote. So I'm going to type here extends remote and import remote from java.rmi package. And every function you write here must throw a remote exception as well as the parameters and return types must be of serializable type. So for our demonstration, we're going to simply work with strings and strings are by default serializable. So I'm going to create a function called public string say hello, which takes a name of the user and throws a remote exception. That's it. Our remote interface is ready. Let's create an implementation class for the same, which is going to serve remote clients. So I'm going to right click the same package, create a new Java class. And the class is going to be called as hello service IMPL. It implements our hello service interface. Let's click finish. And write in a body here, which returns an object of type string. I can simply say string dot format and the formatted text is going to be like hello percentage s and argument is nothing but the name which we received from here. And just to ensure when a client makes a request, the control reaches over here. We'll also put one system dot out dot println and then say here some client requested my service. Let's save the file and create a program that can create an object of this particular class. Register the same thing with something called RMI registry. You can think of RMI registry like a server that is running on a particular port and can remember the objects that you would like to register. So let's go to our package code.vinoth and create a new class over there called as start server. And I would like to remove this service package from here. I also want the main function click finish. Let's get rid of the to do here. And the very first thing that I want to do is to create our service object, which is nothing but hello service IMPL. Let's call it as IMPL equals to new hello service IMPL. In order for a remote client to access this server side object, we must create a proxy based on this object. We call it as a stub and the stub must implement our hello service interface. So I'm going to type here hello service stub equals to unicast remote object dot export and then specify the object that you want to export, which is nothing but IMPL and a port. You can give zero for the default port number. The return value of this particular function call is a generic java.lang.object. We need to cast it. And now we have our stub ready to be registered with RMI registry. The functions here also throw a lot of exceptions. I just would like to throw them away from the main by adding throws exception. At this point in time, we don't have any RMI registry running, but before running this program, we have to ensure that the RMI registry server is ready. And assuming that the RMI registry is ready, we now have to get a reference of that and then register this stub with the same. To get a reference of the RMI registry, we have to create a variable of type registry. Let's call it as registry itself equals to locate registry dot and then say get registry. 
So this will connect to the default port of the registry that is running and will give me an object of that. So let's also import registry. And now all I have to do is to use this registry dot bind and then give a name, whatever the name you want to give, let's call it as hello service remote. And then the object, which is nothing but our stub object. With this now, our RMI registry is given a proxy or a stub object and the client can locate the same thing using this particular name and then invoke the functions on the stub which eventually invoke the functions on the IMPL object. Let's give some feedback message saying that the server is ready and we are done with the start server program. In a new terminal, I'm getting into my desktop where I have something called RMI sandbox and inside that I have the RMI server and inside this if you check we have a couple of uh, folders one of them is a bin which contains all the binary files and source files in the src directory now the rma registry must have access to all these classes especially the stub interface so that it can work with the objects of these classes so either you can issue the rma registry command inside the bin directory or you can set the class path to the bin directory one of that would do so I'm getting into the bin directory and then type in the command RMI registry. And if you want optionally change the port number to whatever the port number you want, for example, 3000, I press enter. And now the RMI registry is ready and it also has access to all the dot class files in the bin directory. Back in Eclipse, we want to run this program now, wherein I'm creating a implementation object. I'm creating a stub object using the implementation object. And I want to register that with the RMI registry that we just now started. And to get a reference of the RMI registry, we have given this command. And once we get the RMI registry, we're going to register this stub with this name. So let's go and check if it's going to work. Let's right click, run as Java application. And you can see that it says server is ready. So which means that we are able to successfully register this stub with this name. Now let's close all these files make sure that your server is up and running. We want to write another program which can actually connect to this. Now, ideally we want to write a separate project. So let's go create a new Java project. Right click new Java project. I'm going to call this as RMI-client. Let's click the next button. And we want to refer to the project that we created already only for the sake of the interface. And if you have written any entity classes, you might also want to get the reference of the same thing. So I think from the RMI server project, you would like to export all the interfaces, especially the remote interfaces and the entity classes so that it can be used in the client. For that, I'm going to go to the project section over here. And then in the class path, I would like to refer to the RMI server so that we have access to the hello service interface and let's click on finish once again i don't want to create a module name i'm going to click on don't create and write in a new program by creating a class and this time the package name i'm going to give a different one so i'll say com.kvnoth and then the program name i'm going to call it as main or probably client something like that i can click on this add a public static void main click finish and here is where we want to get the RMI registry which is same as the previous one where we simply said registry and a variable let's call it as registry equals to locate registry dot get registry and then import the registry from java.rmi.registry once again we don't want to handle the exceptions I'm going to press control one or command one on Mac add throws declaration and I would like to throw away all the exceptions. So from the registry now I can get the list of all the bound names. As of now we have bound only one name which is called hello service remote. So let's see if that is available. I can say registry dot list that will give me the names that have been associated with stub objects. I can assign this to let's say for example stub names equals to press command one or control one to get this auto generated and I can say here for string name in stub names and I want to print all the stubs that is nothing but name. So if I run this program as of now note that our server is already running in one JVM. This will start up another JVM. So we have two JVMs 
communicating with each other at this point in time i'm not communicating i'm just trying to get the registered stub names and you can see that it says hello service remote is the name that is found in this registry there could be multiple such names but as of now we have only one name so let's go and uh, access the same thing i don't need this anymore i'm going to comment this out and then say here from the registry look up for this name which is nothing but hello service remote by default the lookup returns an instance of java.rmi.remote and our hello service is a subtype of remote so i can say here hello service service equals to and then import hello service since we are actually doing a downcasting we have to explicitly mention the same i'm going to press command 1 on windows press control 1 and press enter now we got the hello service object and using the hello service object i can call the say hello function by supplying a name now this is where from one jvm we are invoking a function on another jvm so i can assign this to a variable called message i can even type var in java 11 onwards you can use this var keyword to declare a variable and then i can say here sys out msg so when i run this this is the location where the client is going to communicate with the server using the rmi protocol and we are going to get the response in the form of a string so let's save the file right click run as java application and you can see now it says hello vinod if you carefully observe here i have two terminals one is a terminated console which says main which is nothing but the client program and the server which is still running called start server so the start server if you go you will also see that it says some client requested my service so every time i run this code you will see that it says some client requested my service so this is how you can create a rmi server and also the rmi client to communicate with the server if this video was of any help to you please like the video subscribe and click the bell icon to get the latest notifications and don't forget to visit my website winod.co where you have access to online courses for less than a dollar